Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I hope that everyone had an amazing weekend. Today is Sunday, so it's the Lord's Day, a beautiful restart to the week. I hope that everyone is feeling rejuvenated, well-rested, hydrated, all of those good things, right? So we're going to continue on the series that is focusing on the book of Proverbs, which is one of my favorite books of the Bible. And we're focusing on wisdom, right? That's the theme of this series. Of course, the theme of the book as well. So chapter five, we're going to cover today. And as always, if, you, if you're new here, please remember to subscribe to the channel. Please give it a thumbs up. It really helps with the algorithm. And the format that I follow is I like to do a brief prayer after the initial greeting and welcome. And then we get into the chapter and then I, you know, share with you guys a few of my takeaways from the chapter. And as always, I want to hear from you as well. I know it's a new channel, but I would love to hear comments, you know, your favorite verses from the chapter, any kind of prayer request. So please let me know in the comments section. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord God, for the beautiful day that you've blessed us with. The sun was shining. It was very windy today, but I am so grateful for another day where there's breath in my body. Lord, we ask that you would bless each and every person who is hearing my voice right now. Lord God, we just want more of you in our lives. We ask that you would heal all those who are sick, be near those who are brokenhearted, Lord. Lift up anyone who is feeling discouraged. Father, we thank you so much for your word and for the wisdom that we are able to glean from it. And we ask all these things in your son's Jesus name. Amen. All right, so let's get started with reading the fifth chapter of the book of Proverbs. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Turn your ear to my words of insight, that you may maintain discretion, and your lips may preserve knowledge. For the lips of the adulterous woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil, but in the end, she is as bitter as gall, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave. She gives no thought to the way of life. Her paths wander aimlessly, but she does not know it. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Do not turn aside from what I say. Keep to a path far from her. Do not go near the door of her house, lest you lose your honor to others and your dignity to one who is cruel. Lest strangers feast on your wealth and your toil enrich the house of another. At the end of your life, you will groan. When your flesh and body are spent, you will say how I hated discipline, how my heart spurned correction. I would not obey my teachers or turn my ear to my instructors, but I was soon in serious trouble in the assembly of God's people. Drink water from your own cistern, running water from your own well. Should your springs overflow in the streets, your streams of water in the public squares, let them be yours alone never to be shared with strangers. May your fountain be blessed and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth. A loving doe, a graceful deer, may her breasts satisfy you always. May you ever be intoxicated with her love. Why, my son, be intoxicated with another man's wife? Why embrace the bosom of a wayward woman? For your ways are in full view of the Lord, and he examines all your paths. The evil deeds of the wicked ensnare them. 
the cords of their sins hold them fast. For lack of discipline, they will die, led astray by their own great folly. Bless the reading of his word today. So a few of the takeaways that I have gleaned right from this chapter is it's warning about turning away from the word of God, from Christianity. And he uses the analogy of the adulterous woman in that sense, right? Right here it says, verse three, for the lips of the adulterous woman drip honey and her speech is smoother than oil, but in the end she is bitter as gall, sharp as a two-edged sword. So it's very tricky, you know, when we follow a path that's not aligned with the word of God. And we may think that, you know, it's seductive and it's, you know, something that we, that makes us feel good or, you know, appeals to our nature, right? That we're born with, but in our flesh, but it's not what the Lord would have for us. And in the end, he's really trying to protect us. And then another uh, takeaway is <laughs> starting at verse 11, where the Lord warns us that at the end of our life, you know, we'll groan and our flesh and our body are spent. And you will say, how I hated discipline and how I spurned correction. Like that really stood out to me a lot for a few different reasons, <laughs> right? So, you know, discipline is something that the Lord is a huge advocate of, especially throughout, you know, the book of Proverbs. There's other Proverbs where, you know, he tells us to look to the ant, right? Who is very industrious and hardworking and has a very intrinsic work ethic. And that's something that I can say, you know, um, I've struggled with even in my youth, right? Like I wanted to, you know, like set the alarm for five o'clock and, you know, get up and work out and, you know, do all those things when it's so much <laughs> easier to hit the snooze button and, you know, wrap yourself in, you know, your warm, comfy blankets and your, you know, warm, comfy bed. But it's, it's either we pay on the front end or the back end, right? And so, a lot of times, if we don't take the time to be disciplined in our youth and while we're, you know, able to, you know, have that energy while we're young, if we don't build a life that will, you know, that honors discipline, then ultimately when we're older, we'll pay for it and it's a lot harder um, for us. And so... Basically, what I've gleaned from this chapter is that our lives are um, just a sum of, of our choices, right? So both good and bad. And again, the Lord gives us free will, but he also gives us warnings. And he's, you know, trying to encourage us to honor discipline and to work hard and you know, he doesn't want us to look back on the end of our life and groan when our flesh and our body are spent, right? Like he wants us to enjoy the fruits of our labor. So with that being said, those were a couple of my takeaways. Please let me know your thoughts and your takeaways from the chapter. And I will talk with you later. Take care. Bye.